Leslie Curry, thank you very much for spending some time to talk to us. Happy to. Um, I wanted to ask you um, a question about how I might start my research if I were a new researcher. What kind of advice would you give to me about avoiding common pitfalls, uh, designing a project for success? What, what would you suggest? Well, what I share with my graduate students as the most important lesson, I think it's a starting point, is to identify a research question that you're passionate about. Find something to study that you really care about, because that passion and commitment is what will sustain you through the many, many bumps uh, that you encounter in a research project, from conceptualization of the study through to implementation and dissemination. There are uh, bumps in the road. Um, so first, care very much about what you're doing. And second, uh, in order to navigate those bumps, I think, uh, there are a whole host of resources in the form of people <laughs> and books uh, and published empirical work that you should really draw on. Don't hesitate to identify mentors, content experts that can help with the content of your research question, the methods component of the question. And these may be different people. You could imagine assembling a team uh, where you would draw on people for expertise as you need it. I think it's very important to think about implementation of a project. Uh, what does it really mean that I'm going to survey 6,000 people? <laughs> How will you accomplish it? And to be sure that you have all of the uh, sort of instrumental resources available to you. How you actually do this study. Uh, very important to think about that in advance. And then lastly, uh, really early in a study, even though it's at the end of the process of research, think about your goal. Um, what is the aim? and Where would you like to see this research disseminated? And in what way? Mm. Will this take the form of a policy report? Are you trying to affect policy change in a government environment? Are you trying to publish this in an empirical journal? And for what audience? Are you seeking to produce some other kind of output from your research, uh, a narrative or a visual? So I think having those things in place before you start down the path of a research project is really great, valuable, can be yeah. valuable. Well, I think the, the advice to be passionate is really valuable advice. I know to my cost that that can go hideously wrong. Well. <laughs> I also like your idea of getting some mentors, but, but you know, how would I find them and why would they want to talk to me? I'm just a, a lonely researcher. Mm -hmm. I think the best mentors love to talk to lowly researchers. Uh, they were once lowly researchers. And to, to me, I wouldn't say that I'm one of the best, but I am gratified by the opportunity to work with young, motivated, committed people who've identified pa topics they're passionate about and want to make a difference in the world. So I think you don't want a mentor who wouldn't necessarily uh, appreciate the value of mentorship and that relationship. Uh, I also think you can be strategic about resources. So there are mentors who think, well, I'm not going to spend the next six hours a week with this person for the next year. You can be strategic about the way you draw on people. You know, I'm beginning this research project, I see you, you know, I value your expertise in Y, I would imagine this would be one conference call, two meetings, one review of an X, to help people understand what the expectations are, and to be together uh, on the same page together in terms of how the relationship will evolve throughout the project. That's great. I wish I'd spoken to you at the beginning of my PhD. <laughs> um, uh, looking around the research methodology today, what, what excites you? What do you think is a really interesting field of well, um, I think I would say um, the field of mixed methods is one that offers tremendous opportunity, uh, a growing interest in this way of doing research or thinking about new knowledge discovery. And what's, in my mind, and to my experience, uh, valuable about the met mixed methods approach is the interdisciplinary nature of it, the breadth of orientation and expertise that can be incredibly stimulating and uh, lead to discovery that you would not find if you kind of have your myopic, I'm a sociologist, hat on. So the breadth of authentically interdisciplinary research opportunities, to me, is really exciting. And then uh, something that we're especially focused on, uh, the research team that I'm from, is the application of our work. So in the health sciences, we know that it takes typically 17 years to translate research from the bench to the bedside. So meaning from the laboratory, where we have some new evidence about efficacy of a treatment, to actually getting that treatment to a patient. And that is wrong. <laughs> 17 years in order to make a change is much too long a time. So the emphasis on implementation science, translation research, to me is fascinating and really has tremendous opportunity for growth um, and um, the opportunity to make a real contribution. How is it that we move science into practice? Mm -hmm. And because at the end of the day, we think you know one goal is to publish a paper in a journal, but another goal, you would hope, in the health
health care arena anyway is to improve the quality of care for patients and their families. So uh, having your eye on sort of a long target, figuring out how to get there helps you, I think, navigate those paths as you're doing a research project. Yeah, absolutely. Mixed methods, though, isn't that difficult research? What if I'm just a statistician or just a qualitative researcher? It sounds a bit scary to me. Mm, I bet it sounds scary, and you probably are eye-rolling from one chair or another. Um, so I have talked to many audiences, chronic disease epidemiologists, uh, and nurses from fundamental, core fundamental qualitative orientations, and uh, I would say that there's, as you have an open mind, and uh, willingness to learn that there really can be professional and personal growth in engaging in mixed methods. So you find a team that's functional <laughs> and that has within it uh, a complement of methods and content expertise and get engaged with it. It's, um, in my experience, training people up who have come from a single orientation can be really very fun because mm -hmm. there's so much to learn uh, and, uh, and not terribly onerous. So I think it's worth at least investing. Thinking about. Thank you, Leslie Cody. That was very interesting and very good. Thank you. Thank you.